Right here, playoff podcast, postseason podcast. I don't even know what to fucking call We're it. We're two guys talking. We don't know what to do with ourselves. We are so excited. Uh, this one, this one was not uh, nearly the the sure thing that game one was. But the Arizona Diamondbacks have won game two and now have a commanding two game lead in this five game series against the Los Angeles Dodgers in the National League Division Series. Holy shit! Who would have uh, thought? Who would have thought? Not us. Not us. Look at us. Uh, but uh, this was an incredible win. The Arizona Diamondbacks offense stayed hot, which we talked about on the pregame show. Uh, that was a must. They needed their offense to stay rolling. They didn't quite get the offensive explosion that they got in game one, but they were able to limit Bobby Miller's time in the game. Yeah. Uh, once again, they knocked a uh, starting pitcher out early. Uh, they got things started early with a Corbin Carroll leadoff walk. Uh, Cattell bunted for a single to get on, on base. Tommy Pham would then load the bases a batter later with a single. So like, Right away, the Diamondbacks had fucking bases loaded. They had a lot of things going on. And and that hot start really did set them up for a win that we did not think was going to be solidified by yeah. that little oh, offense I mean, that they yeah. generated in the first yeah, inning. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, I, no way that I think that the three runs they scored early on were going to be enough to win this game. Absolutely not. A not. shot in hell. And sure enough, <laughs> that was it. They, 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 they got it done. Um <laughs> we we got going we got, crazy we got right now. we're gonna get to a lot of Bob Costas hate Ski. later for sure. Ski. Yeah, no, uh, Bob Costas was definitely not on our side tonight. But we want to thank you guys for the super chats. Colin DeWitt said the only way Costas could have sounded more disappointed is if he literally sobbed on live television. <laughs> and yeah, D backs are a wagon, baby. I don't know what happened Welcome to Bob to Costas. Uh, first of all. This guy has been defending Bob Costas since I game was. one because Today because rightfully so Bob Costas is an East Coast guy. Well, he's, he's usually an East Coast guy. He's a Syracuse. He's grad. a Syracuse grad, so of course he's going to have his back. But there was a lot of uh, I don't know. I guess maybe 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 he uh, felt like know. he was trying to keep people in the game. Maybe he, he was just trying to uh, figure the think... Dodgers are the are the have the bigger audience, so he's maybe appealing to the bigger audience. Yeah. But there was definitely some favoritism. I just don't think Bob, Bob Costas knew about the Arizona Diamondbacks, yeah, and so he was just talking from what he knew. We've been Probably trying. just about the Los Angeles Dodgers. We've been trying and, to know, tell people. We've been trying. To and inform and, you. And, 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 and soon enough, they'll learn. Yeah. Um, before it's too late. But Bob probably won't. He probably won't learn before it's too late. But uh, we got some more Super Chats. Uh, Giselle, we love you, Giselle. She said they let these snakes get hot. That was that the, was the mistake. The worst mistake you could have made. The worst made. mistakes you could have made. Do not uh, let these snakes get Mark hot. Mark Solera is in Disneyland, Hong Kong. He said, I'm in goddamn Disney, Hong Kong, screaming right now. What are we? A We're on the fucking wagon. wagon. Uh, Andrew says, uh, Diamondback, a Guriel MVP, best clutch home run I've ever seen in a while. Uh, yeah, Lourdes Guriel, big for the offense yeah. tonight. Albert says, ain't no wagon like a D-backs wagon because the D-backs wagon don't stop. No we one circles stay the wagons, fucking rolling. Like the Arizona Diamondbacks. That's right. So back to that first inning, of course, they did put up those three runs. Carroll would score on a Christian Walker sack fly. Cattell scores on a Gabby ground out. They didn't do it uh, the way they did it the other night. You know, they didn't do it with the yeah. home runs. They didn't do it uh, with all of this offense. It wasn't offense. an absolute ass kicking. It like was not an one. absolute ass kicking. And like you said, we were very unsure that that was going to be enough to give the Diamondbacks yeah. a win. But uh, Lourdes Guriel added an RBI single in the inning, and that gave the Diamondbacks a 3-0 lead. Per Sarah Langs, who's been doing exceptional work once again uh, throughout the NLDS, said that the D-backs are one of three teams in the postseason to score three-plus innings, uh, three-plus first inning runs in each of their first two games of a postseason series. The other two were uh, the ALDS A's in uh, and the 2000 NLDS 
Cardinals. So the Diamondbacks are in a rare territory when it comes to scoring early mm. in the postseason. Uh, Lourdes Goriel, of course, added a solo home run. Home run. Uh, I think Andrew brought that up in the fifth inning. And yeah, I mean, the offense did enough. And uh, Zach Gallen was really, really good on the mound. But there was some times where there were some questionable things. The Diamondbacks used a challenge in the first inning on a play that they lost. It really didn't seem like it was as close, you know, yeah. maybe maybe not worth using a challenge, especially yeah. considering how crucial those challenges could be. Uh, and, and, you know, Zach Gallon, of course, like we said, Zach Gallon, everything was working for Zach Gallon. He had his knuckle curve working. He was uh, using his fastball a lot, but he struggled a bit with his command. He did remain efficient and effective. He didn't mm-hmm. have a very high pitch count when he got pulled out of the game, but um, he did have a huge strikeout of Freddie Freeman that ended the fifth inning. With a strike right down the pipe. Right. And it seemed to just completely steal the Dodgers momentum that it felt like they were building in the moment, right? Like that felt like it was like a fire extinguisher just putting out the the fire of the Dodgers in that moment. Yeah, because I mean, that was very much a moment where it was like, okay, y'all are good, but I'm also, I'm also pretty damn good too. Uh, So I'm going to do me, you do you, and we'll see who wins. (laughs) And Zach Allen won. And like you said, they didn't think he would have the audacity to throw that ball. The unmitigated goal to throw that ball down. Damon Damon and the show are are, are (laughs) two peas in a pod. They, They don't, they fear no man. Yeah. It's it's pretty wild, man. It is pretty wild. Um, but then Zach Gallon, like I said, uh, he was pulled out of the game on what we considered to be early. I yeah. mean, we we didn't like the move in the moment. Uh, it was. I still don't like it. Yeah, he he pulled Zach Gallon, who you know gave up a pair of lightly hit or was it a pair of hits? Was it one hit? I, I forget. Yeah, but I mean, regard the thing. moment Zach Gallon was pulled. I mean, he, he still felt, it felt like he still had a lot yeah. to offer and to yeah. give. And I mean, again, Zach Gallon isn't the kind of guy that necessarily has things fall apart. I felt like Tory was maybe overmanaging a bit, trying to get to the bullpen that they've had a lot of success with faster, just in case this turned on Zach. But it almost turned into a disaster for the yeah. Diamondbacks because Andrew Saul Frank was not the Andrew Saul Frank that he has been, uh, for this mm-hmm. team at times, and and we knew there would come a time where you know where where he would hit that wall. Yeah. Like there was no way; it almost seemed impossible that a player this young could continue to put up the numbers that he has put up out of the bullpen. But <laughs> uh, yeah, they definitely uh, think things almost turned on them fast. Yeah, I mean, it is kind of the story of this postseason now, where it's it's three of the four games they've played where they've had they've needed the bullpen, they needed someone in the bullpen to pick up someone else in the bullpen who has struggled right south frank came in it was just not very good yeah. walked too straight i believe um and it looked bad but then it was tea time tea time tea time ryan tea thompson tea time. yep get those tea uh time. get those pinkies up like it, he came in he shut it down ryan thompson uh, was incredible and tonight. that's just kind of how the bullpen has been where if if one guy's not on uh and you can you can criticize tory as much as you want for some of the decision he makes because i think it's fair but the one thing that like He's clearly just had a short leash with everybody. He's he's pulled people ultimately at the right time. Yeah. Even though I, I still think that I think you could have pulled obviously left that gallon in there longer, but ultimately it worked out. Like he at least after Zach Gallon, like he pulled guys when he needed to pull guys. Uh, and it obviously again worked out in the D-backs favor. Um, but it was scary there for a little bit for sure. It was very scary. And I mean, honestly, it felt like one of those times where maybe it was it was that one move too much. Yeah. Um, but then, like we talked about, David Dave Roberts said, no, no, no. You, you're going to overmanage? There's Hold my beer. To Hold my beer. Uh, Dave Roberts then proceeded to put in not one, but I believe three, three. pinch hitters three straight. in the inning. Chris Taylor. Um, or no, no, not three straight. Because he had Chris Taylor and then James Outman and then Colton, uh, Wong? Colton Wong. Yeah. Yeah. Not. Oh, but then Kike Hernandez was right after Colton yeah. Wong or right before. He was in there somewhere. But right. Yeah, there was three. Um, so the Dodgers lineup effectively flipped. And honestly, the one they had out there didn't seem as apo- is, is, as imposing well, and, as the one they previously had, had in the game. That was the section of the lineup that ended up being up at the end of the game. Yeah. Um, and so it ended up being like crucial. Crucial. Yeah. yeah. And I, I don't know. I, I'm not going to. Like this is not a shot at Tori. I'm not going to go as far as to give him the credit for playing that le- that many dimensions of chess, where he's like, okay, if I do this, then they're going to take out three of them. Like I'm not giving him <laughs> that kind of credit, but ultimately, again, it did end up working out in their favor. It did, um, and you can you can criticize him for his management skills as much as you want, but if you're going to criticize him, then you need to be criticizing Dave Roberts even louder because yeah, he yeah. 
ultimately ended up kind of screwing it up for the Diva well, for the Dodgers. For the Dodgers, yeah. And I mean, I mean, you could say what you want, but they uh, the Dodgers also went to their bullpen very early. Yep. Bo- uh, Bobby Miller only lasted a one and two thirds innings pitch. They went to uh, Gratterall early, yeah, early. And I mean, we saw that definitely as a sign of the Dodgers pulling out all the stops as far as they wanting to pressure. win this game. Yeah, but it also felt desperate. Yeah, no, and I definitely think they felt the pressure. I, I was, <laughs> I was completely in for the move because once again, this is the second game in a row where a Dodgers starter wasn't able to go two innings. Uh, I mean, obviously, we know what happened with Kershaw mm-hmm. in the first, but uh, the 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 impl- or the the like ramifications yeah. this is having on the Dodgers for the rest of the series, like. I'm 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 thinking ahead. I'm thinking of the series going five games. I'm just thinking of it being like a longer term thing because I'm trying to be a little bit more, I guess, pessimistic about it and be a bit bit more realistic. But yeah. when I start seeing them do this stuff, it it's it's a great thing for the Diamondbacks because this is a well rested bullpen that now has been utilized a lot, and the Diamondbacks not only have had a chance to see them, but they've had a chance to realize that. They, they have them on the heels and that, that this team is nothing to fear at this point. Yeah, no, I think that uh, this is obviously a Dodgers team playing with a boatload of confidence. Um, and yeah, now they've put the Dodgers in. Obviously, there's going to be an off day, but they put the Dodgers in a situation where they need Lance Lynn to huh. give them length. Yeah. And there's a reason Lance Lynn is the third guy pitching in this series, because he's the worst yeah. of the three bad or, or of the, th- I guess, two bad pitchers they've already thrown out there. Like it. It's not necessarily like if you're a Dodgers fan, as as blindly confident and ignorant as they can be, you got to be a little worried. Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, Lance Lynn's not that guy, pal. It's not just that. It's the fact that this Diamondbacks team now has a chance. To, and, and I mean, this team received a lot of criticism about the they're mi- missing out on pitchers, yeah. missing out on Lance Lynn, missing out on certain guys who aren't even in the playoffs any longer. Guys that had a terrible. Uh, I guess you could say not second half, but post uh, trade deadline performance. And yeah. they weren't nearly worth the the assets that those teams that acquired them gave up for them. But this is another chance as far as that goes, right? Like this is a chance to see right in front of us, Brandon fought facing off against Lance Lynn and knowing that the Diamondbacks didn't do anything to jeopardize their future to make a move for a player like that yeah. and potentially seeing their future uh, starter, maybe their future stud, maybe their future yeah. Number one guy, get his, you know, get get another start in the playoffs here in a in a big high leverage situation. Um, I'm sure with Tory pulling Zach at 84 pitches, that there's a good chance that Brandon Fought in that game is going to be on an even shorter leash. But yeah. Gallon tonight, his line five and a third, five hits, one run, two walks, four strikeouts. Yeah. Just the aside aside from the length, aside from the length, you couldn't really ask for yeah. more from Zach. And again, Gallen. there's an off day, so everyone will be available. In in game three, which is obviously a great situation to be in, um, but it, yeah, yeah, I mean, sure, you wanted a little more length. This is the postseason. Like, yeah, if, if this is a regular season game, you are probably getting six innings at least from Zach Gallon because he probably gets to stay in that game and he probably gets out of it. Yeah, um, and so it, it's a postseason, so it, it is what it is. Um, but it it is, uh, yeah, I mean, you needed Zach Gallon to come out and be the better starter, and he was certainly that. I, you know, one thing I do like about this, honestly, and I know again, this might, I'm just getting crazy here with trying to be optimistic and just all, all the pluses here. But I mean, the Diamondbacks need Zach Gallon and Merrill Kelly a lot. So, well, that, yeah, that was like, thing I was gonna bring up like trying, sure. trying to maybe give these guys a little bit of shorter outing considering yeah. the, how much you're going to need out of them if this Diamondbacks team is going to continue this impressive run. Yeah. That's there's a, it, there's it's, a lot it's not of the worst thing to give them a short leash. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, 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 100%. I was thinking about that exact same thing. Like you come into game four if they need it. Um, then whew, this is not a man who's thrown a lot of pitches. No. Um, and so and that's definitely, no. that's not a guy I want to see, or I guess it would be game five. Yeah. Uh, but still, I mean, even then it's, it's going to be, yeah, this is just a really tough situation for the, Oh, look who we got. Look who's in the chat. Maria, we missed you so much. Do you know where Mo is? Cause I DM'd him and he did Maria, not get back to me. Maria is a real one. Maria is a real one. Maria uh, is one of our favorite Dodgers fans. She said, congrats, guys. I've always said the playoffs are a crapshoot. Everyone starts off with a clean slate. The regular season stats mean nothing but congrats. Super sad Dodger fan. We love you, Maria. <laughs> yeah. You are you are our favorite super sad Dodger fan right now. But uh, we love you guys. We appreciate all of you guys for being here right now in the chat. And, of course, it is time to name our King Snake. And who, I mean, again, lots of contributions. Corbin Carroll, incredible, by yeah. the way. 
uh, on base 12 times so far this postseason. <laughs> 12 mean, times in four games. Ruck. I'm going to say that again. He's 12 times in four games. He's a rookie. Meanwhile, James Outman, barely Who? able to catch a baseball. Who? Barely able to catch a baseball. The moment's but too big. The moment's too big. But, on his leg every uh, opportunity he gets. It, it's got to be the guy that hit his first uh, postseason home mm-hmm. run, also hit his first uh, multi-RBI game uh, of his career in the postseason. It's our very own purple-haired menace, oh, Lourdes yes. Gurriel Jr. Uh, and again, man, you just can't you can't say enough about the contributions from both Gurriel Jr. and Gabriel Moreno. And I can't yeah. stop revisiting that trade <laughs> from, with oh, the Toronto boy. Blue Jays. But I mean, now especially in the postseason, that both of these guys are putting in. Uh, sh- such strong nights uh, to to help the Diamondbacks win. That trade is looking more and more like a, just an absolute slam yeah. dunk. And this is why Hazen gets an extension. That's um, right. Yeah, I mean it was it was huge. It, it you could argue that they're like it's one of the biggest. I don't like the biggest moves the franchise has made in a very long time. Like, yeah, it has worked out to an uncanny level. Yeah, um, and for both sides. Yeah. right. But um, we don't really care about Toronto. They're at home or. On vacation. Can we get that? Can we get that uh, comment back up there really fast? The one that you just had, because I mean that's such a good point. Uh, Ga- uh, uh, what Hazen has done, Seawald, Tommy Pham, yeah, bringing in Ryan Thompson, uh, certified G, bona fide stud. And you can't uh, teach Ryan that. Thompson. You can't teach that. I mean, everyone other than Jace has been a, a real massive contributor. Has been like really important. This bullpen fires me the fuck up. It does. Yeah. Like every time they get out there, I have, I just want to run through a wall afterwards. No, it is. And again, the bullpen is the kind of thing where if one guy is is struggling, the rest of the bullpen's going to pick him up. Yeah. And that's how it's been through four games. And this bullpen has got a little bit of swag to it, a Mm -hmm. little bit of like that kind of everyone in there is a little mentally unstable. Uh, And that's exactly (laughs) what you want out of your bullpen. Oh, I love psychopaths in my bullpen. It's my favorite thing. And that's exactly what you want. Um, yeah, but so, but Ryan Thompson, we want easy. Says it right there, Ryan Thompson. I mean, Paul Seawald. We knew what we were getting. Time. We knew what we were getting. We we jump around for Paul Seawald. By yeah. the way, no hits, no runs tonight for Paul Seawald. Not no walks. Paul Seawald experience. Just I'm not complaining. Yeah, about just it. just the most boring Seawald experience you could ask for. Yeah. Uh, but Ryan Thompson again. Just the fact that this guy has come over from you know again we we said it earlier we broke down his stats he didn't really have a bad season even though his era would say otherwise he really just had two bad starts that made his era skyrocket yeah. and as a reliever that didn't get a lot of innings pitched in the season made it made him look bad but ryan thompson has been a bona fide g bona fide stud excuse me certified, certified g, g a bona, bona fide stud, stud and you gotta get that teach that right so ryan thompson he's six foot tall yeah you can't teach that you can't teach that, either. Can't teach that either but uh yeah his That's delivery is incredible and what he's been able to do for this team has been absolutely incredible this bullpen is just different they're just built different they literally are different from what they were in the beginning of the season and uh hazen the way that he adapted mm-hmm. and changed and was able to find guys like ryan thompson Someone yeah. like Tommy Pham, who's able to contribute so strongly in game one of this series. Uh, it's why the Diamondbacks are here. Yeah. Honestly, adapting is why the Diamondbacks are here. We said it on the pregame show yeah. when we talked about Clayton Kershaw starting for the Dodgers. If Madison Bumgarner was still on this team, <laughs> you can't not consider starting Madison Bumgarner in game one of the postseason. And that's fucking crazy to even have those words fly out of my mouth right now. But yeah, uh, it's, it is what it is. You know, you can't have someone of that experience not lead the way in the playoffs when you think that that's your best option. In reality, the Diamondbacks were able to adapt and truly go with their best option, the guys that really gave them the best chance to win, and that's why they are here right now. Yeah, no, 100%. And it's just, with Ryan Thompson, it's like, it's just baseball is so crazy, and it's why I'm I'm sitting here at a point where it's like, I I think the Diamondbacks can win the World Series. Not necessarily more than I think any of the other teams can win the World Series, but I Fuck, but they why can. not? They can win the World Series. They're here. We're talking about a guy who was on another a team that had dreams of winning a World Series in the in the Tampa Bay Rays. Um, got cut by them and is now pitching crucial innings for a team that's actually still in the playoffs. That's right. Um, like it is, it is crazy. You like you never, you never, ever, ever could have reasonably predicted that the Diamondbacks would be here with the guys that they that yeah. have gotten them here. It's um, it's been so much fun to watch. And it ha- it has been just an absolutely an absolute joy to watch. Yep. Yeah. Um but we appreciate you guys being here right now in the PHNX Sports YouTube channel. 
all 616 of you. What are you guys doing? We love you guys. Love Thank you for being here. Yeah. Uh, of course, if you uh, are here right now, make sure to subscribe to the PHN Exports YouTube channel. Sign up for notifications. That way you don't miss when any of our wonderful shows go live. And leave us a thumbs up. We got, we got 600 of you. There should be 600 thumbs up. That mm. We want our attaboys. Uh, we appreciate that. But uh, again, we thank you guys for being here. Uh, the Diamondbacks are a wagon. So, of course, get the shirt that represents that. Yeah. Uh, get that motherfucking wagon shirt. Uh, it's Get, get it here in time for the Yoffs. Uh, wear that wagon shirt uh, and represent this team that is absolutely on a roll. I have a good question because there's, there's some chat in it starting about like, People got to bring the brooms, right? Mm -hmm. There better be brooms at Chase Field. Oh, yeah. And that broom looked oh, look yeah. real good with that shirt. Yeah. Similar color. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. No, I like it. I like it. But um, I mean, you got to bring the brooms. <laughs> if they don't let you in with the brooms, figure it out. Yeah, bring just figure it out. Uh, <clears throat> also, on your way to that game, stop by Circle K. Great yeah, place to stop. like five within... There's like one, like a block south. There's there. one everywhere, all around the stadium. No matter what direction you're coming from, you should be able to find one. Uh, Circle K is America's thirst stop. You can take, think you can take in uh, unopened bottles of water. Of water and there's you like snacks. You can bring in like like some peanuts or, yeah, or cracker seeds, jacks. I believe, yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, but you can also, <laughs> you, you can. Uh, well, you I don't can, even know what just happened. I said Cracker Jacks is what I said. But, you know, you could bring you, Cracker Jacks. Well, uh, I, What's what's the problem? What, I don't understand. What's the what's the problem with you saying Cracker Jack? No, I'm just I, it was it, it felt it felt cheesy. It oh, felt, was it, I said peanuts and seeds. I know I went with Cracker Jacks. That's why I was trying to one two three three you're out. That's the right. old ball game. Um, but Circle K does have it, it has all the great snacks. By the way, all the great baseball snacks. Also, don't sleep on Circle Maybe K's true. branded snacks. Because those are also incredible I was as eating, well. I was eating gummy worms during the game. Yeah, they, we, us yeah they, they absolutely do. Uh, you can also join their Inner Circle membership program for free by downloading the Circle K app today. Terms and conditions apply at participating locations. Visit CircleK.com for details. But when you do, uh, you will get 25 cents off per gallon on your first five Phillips as a member of the Inner Circle. And, of course, it is a great time to save on gas because gas is mm. very expensive. True. You'll also get buy five, get the six one free on a selection of Circle K products, such as pizza, coffee, and ice cold fountain drinks. Not to mention the fact that they'll send you all sorts of uh, all sorts of free coupons for stuff. So, uh, of course, that is uh, excellent as well. Make sure to check them out. Uh, and also check out Illegal Pete's. Great place to celebrate mm. an Arizona Diamondbacks win. Patio season is here, so that means patio beers. Of course, uh, Illegal Pete's margaritas are the strongest in Arizona, uh, and they have incredible food uh if you have any questions on what to order this is the man to go yes, to for that protein, i'm not even gonna pretend queso, yep i'm not even gonna steak, yep. all, uh, all of it make sure you get a mexican coke on the side if you're not unless you're getting a margarita or por no los dos um but you really can't go wrong if we're being honest or a good four peaks or a good four peaks, or a good four so peaks. That, like i said por no los tres that's right at all yep that's right. So go to uh, oh Little pipe and queso. Did you leave? Oh, pipe I, and queso? I said pipe queso. And queso. That was how, first thing I said in my order. It's double protein queso. Everything yeah. else. To you. Listen to the man uh, and then go to Illegal Pete's. It's your go-to spot this uh, fall. Stop by for happy hour, 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. every day at all 12 locations. Legal Pete's, the go-to spot for burritos, buddies, and beer for 28 years. Uh, some super chats we got from Brandon Buckingham. He said, D-backs, all right, what? Motherfucking wagon. Little Let's fucking wagon. go clinch on Wednesday. Absolutely. Uh, our comrade, comrade BM says, in my opinion, this win is much more impressive than game one because the ability to bend but not break is so important in the yachts. Yeah. No, right? I think you needed to see them win a game like this. Yeah. Uh, in this series, right? Yeah. Because game one is such a blowout. You could easily see a world in which the Dodgers were like, oh, shit, we got to wake up and they come back guns blazing. Yeah. But for them to come and, and win a close game like this shows that, like, uh, the the D backs just might be the better game, better team in this series. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It, it, they're they're winning in different ways. We've talked about the contributions they are coming from all mm -hmm. sorts of different guys, and this game was another example of that. With Lourdes Gurriel Jr. being our king snake, uh, Momo Murray in the super chat says, "Let's get 2017 revenge. Go for the sweep. I am with it. Let's go." To uh, Tony, thank you for your super chat. He says, "Costas hasn't done a game since the internet was invented, so let's cut him some slack for the old school guys and act like we've been there." That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. And I do. I, I did try to defend him and say from a broadcaster perspective, sometimes you're just trying to make it seem interesting. Yeah. So, like, it's hard to do that with an 11, to, you know, nine to nothing game that became 11 to two. Uh, but this one definitely was yeah. close. I mean, we, we, we were we were holding our breath yeah, quite a bit. In Bob Costas's defense, he knows damn well that L.A. is a bigger market. And he knows mm -hmm. also damn well that if you're an L.A. fan, you're watching this game. I'm probably you're probably not having any fun. Yep. This probably this, this scored two runs yep. for the second game in a row. 
I, if I'm Bob Costas, I'm like, I got to give something. I got to give these the Dodger fans a re some reason to some stay, reason to stay have hope. The game. Yeah, absolutely. You're not wrong. And I think that that's a big part of it, to be honest. I really do. Uh, our guy, Flex. Flex. Yes, Let's sir. go with the $20 super chat. Flex is a man of his word. Uh, for those of you that aren't aware, unaware, uh, Flex has said he will continue to add $5 onto his super chat for every Diamondbacks win. We are up to $20. Uh, Flex says, Let's go, baby. Circle the wagon. Let's finish these bums in downtown. Phoenix. Love y'all. We love yes, you sir. too, Flex. Appreciate you, Flex. We appreciate you. Uh, Tony also said concerned for fought in game three, but then again, the Dodgers need Lance Lynn and an elderly Clayton Kershaw to force a game five. I like our chances. Yeah. I love our bullpen. I love Why our chances. Not us? Uh, I mean, we saw even if fought's not on, we saw, and I, obviously a very different team than the Brewers, but um, they haven't been hitting like it at least. So if, if, if even if Flot's not on, they've shown that they can figure out ways to win that game. So absolutely true. Uh, Mitch Fleet. Thank you, Mitch, for your super chat. Mitch said, if you told me in July, we would be up two games to none on the Dodgers in the division series. I'd ask, what the hell are you smoking? Yeah. I mean, I think when we made any kind of, and when we even alluded to that being a possibility, not that, not yeah. that scenario, but like even the Diamondbacks making the playoffs, people asked us how much oh, OGs had we I would have been, I would have been so annoyed with people because I would, because I, like I was at someone, I think Damon earlier, I'm like, one thing I just don't really get behind is like just downright delusional fans. When they're like, there's just no rhyme or reason to what they're thinking. During the dark days, we would have been like, get real. <laughs> I would have been like, you're, you're fucking crazy. The, I would have been like, you're delusional. Days, and I don't we wouldn't you, have entertained that. I don't take you seriously as a person. Let us know when you wake up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, wake me up when September ends, I guess, yeah. if you yeah. will. Um, and here we are in October. Oh, my God. I never knew that song was about baseball. Yeah. <laughs> Mark Solera in the Super Chat says, hey, before I go, these L.A. fans are awfully quiet. Mark, you have fucking rides to ride at Disneyland. Go ride your goddamn rides. Know, go like, ride. Oh, man. There is a Mo? the Haunted where Mansion ride at Hong Kong is fantastic. So make sure you ride that, Mark. Uh, where is Mo? I DM'd him to see where he was at. and He didn't even reply to me. So. Weird. Uh, he's a coward. Uh, Mr. Grimm, thank you for your uh, super chat. He said, taking two from L.A. and L.A., what do I use for my third wish? I don't know. Taking three? Yeah. Or but, taking one from uh, L.A. Uh, yeah, you wish, you wish for more wishes. That's what well, you yeah. wish. You wish for more wishes. Yeah, I've always thought about that. When they're like, oh, I wish for more wishes. Well, you can't wish for more wishes. Well, I wish I could wish for more wishes, and then I would wish for more wishes. Like, That's, that seems like a good workaround. I will workaround. go as far That's as, an you, absolute as, far as the genie needs I like me to that. go. Um, I will start wishing for the ability to make the wish that yeah. allows me to wish for unlimited wishes. Uh, Ryan, uh, in the super chat, thank you for your super chat. Ryan 8495 said, these calls to restructure, restructure the Yoffs is insane. Six is already a disadvantage having to beat three, then two, then most likely one seed, all division winners. Exactly. And doing it on short rust yeah. for 162 fucking game regular season and then having to like have one day off before you go off and, and and start the postseason and then just play damn near every day. Like, yeah, I, I'm not I'm not listening yeah. to this entire situation well, about restructuring we didn't the playoffs. Really talk about when we were talking about the, the, the in the pregame being like, oh, I don't feel bad for people that uh, um, I don't feel bad for people that have like off time, whatever. But it's like you, the, the other side of that is that the Diamondbacks had to pitch Brandon fought in game one. <laughs> yeah. They yeah. had to pitch yeah. a kid that was pitching in triple A earlier this year in well, game one because and, they didn't have off days. And, and and a kid that they did not let have a very long leash yeah. out there who didn't have a very good start. And realistically, that should have tanked their postseason. And it didn't because the D-backs were a fucking wagon. It was just a worker. It was, it was something that Diamondbacks have had to deal with all season long. So it wasn't yeah. something new, right? It was like they've had to deal with... And, and this is no shot to any of these guys. Tommy Henry, Ryan Nelson, Zach Davies, uh, Brandon Fott, all of these guys being starters that you had no clue at times what you were going to get out of them. So yeah. on, at a moment's notice, you didn't want to let a game slip away. Now, during the regular season, Torrey was much more prone to letting these guys stay out there and try to build confidence, build innings, work on their pitches, try to just get out of shit. Like, okay, you gave up a three-run home run, but now fucking figure it out and stay in the game and be productive, be be effective at getting yeah. more outs. And that doesn't happen for everybody. And a lot of guys just fold no matter what, no matter how much experience they have doing that, right? So it's like the Diamondbacks now have that experience with dealing with, with the starting pitchers not being able to stay out there or at least not knowing what you're going to get out of them on any given night. Mm. And at times that's even included Zach Gallon on the road, right? So like I, I think that that's the thing is maybe even with Zach Gallon tonight, you know, and 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 you know what we're gonna see probably when Brandon Fott pitches on Wednesday is Tori Lavolo keeping this thing 
tight. Yeah. If things start to go like fall apart quickly, he's going to turn to his bullpen quickly. Yeah. Uh, and we do have the probables for the rest of this series. Should we need more games than Wednesday? Wink, uh, if necessary, on those last two, of course. Um, but yeah, Lance Lynn and Brandon Fott going here in what could be the decisive yeah. final game of this of this five game series against the Dodgers, I which mean, look at, look, seems unbelievable. Look at those say. ERAs. 5.73 for Lynn, 5.72 for Fott. Like, uh, this is not... I mean, <laughs> yeah, this, yeah, if you, if yeah. you got Fott going out there, like, this is the guy you want him going up this against. This is who you want him going up against, um, yeah. It, it really is just, like... there's. I see a scenario in which the D-backs have a win very similar to Game 1, in which they absolutely rock Lance Lynn and, and Fott. And, I mean, the, the problem is that they will be pitching for their lives. So Brandon Fott... Will need or, or Lynn will have an incredible, like an even shorter leash than the starters have already had, um, if things go bad. But still, um, it's I, I look at this and I feel good. I, I think uh, you know we had Josh Hunt's question earlier on, and I in his comment on the pregame show when he talked about like it really does feel at times. You got Bob Costas. You got a lot of this discussion now about like needing to reseed. You know, the playoffs or whatever, you have them wanting to change the structure of the playoffs. You had Tori commenting on that kind of pissing the team off. Hmm. And, and you know, of course, because, you know, uh, you know, now you have the lowly Diamondbacks beating the Dodgers. Right. And like, sorry, uh, I, I think our, our, you know, our known our known baseball GM, Elise, in the chat uh, left us a comment and she was absolutely right. Wherever it is, it's in there somewhere. Um, but Elise said something. There it is. Uh, wait, no. No, that's not it. Uh, about about it's not just the layoff. A lot of right? comments tonight. A I know comments. there's a lot of comments. Hard <laughs> to keep guys. up with it. I saw it. I was trying to get back to it as soon as possible. Um, but it's not just the fact that they have the layoff due to winning, you know, the the or or to you're doing to be in the top seed and having the buy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the Braves, the Dodgers, they clinched a while back. So those teams now have been kind of. Coasting. And cruise control, yeah. and yeah, they've been coasting, uh, and and uh, getting to this point in the playoffs is different for a team like the Diamondbacks, who have essentially been in survival mode since August, because yeah. July was so terrible for them that they put themselves in a position to essentially be playing playoffs yeah. games every single day for two fucking straight months. Yeah. No, that, that's a very that, good point. That just makes you different. Yeah, it's not. It's that's a good, very good point. Like they have been playing high leverage baseball consistently. Um, which is not the the case for a team like the Dodgers. Yeah. They have not really been needing to play baseball that really meant something for like a month. Yeah. Um, the Do the D backs have been playing every single day like their life depends on it. Um, and now I think you're starting to see a little bit of that difference where they the the idea that every pitch, every at bat, everything matters is not new to this team. Yeah. Um, and yeah. they're at this point seem much more comfortable with it than the Dodgers. I think that there's something to be said too about the fact that like, you know, again, we talk about the production coming from every, from, from different guys, right? Uh, you, you just aren't relying on one guy to do it. You aren't relying on two guys to do it. And I'm not saying the Dodgers are, but when we, for instance, got the lineup change from Dave Roberts tonight and he brings in, Kiki Hernandez, he brings in Colton Wong that was hitting 183 during the regular season. Mm -hmm. You know, all of a sudden that lineup that really, I'm not going to say was or wasn't intimidating before, looked a lot less intimidating because now it felt like everything was essentially falling on Freddie Freeman and Mookie Betts at that yeah. point. Yeah, and 100%. obviously with those two guys that have a, over 900 OPS and are uh, MVP candidates, you know, the two of them on, on one team, like I understand relying on them a lot, but I don't feel like the Diamondbacks offense goes that way. I don't feel yeah. like this team goes that way where they're going to rely on Cattell Marte, who didn't have a great night tonight offensively, mm -hmm. having, you know, having a night. And if he doesn't have his, if he doesn't have a good night, then so go the Diamondbacks. Yeah. And I mean, to be fair, we haven't really seen this team play in this postseason where Corbin's had a bad night. So you could say that Corbin might be that. But yeah, I mean, Mookie Betts has just been terrible. 
like downright awful through these first two games. Our guy uh, Zach Lind is here, oh, by the way. Yes, sir. What up, Zach? We were talking about you on the pregame show. Uh, Zach was at Disneyland, also at Disneyland. A lot of people at Disneyland today. Uh, Zach was wearing that Diamondbacks hat at, at Disneyland, and, and no Dodgers fan would look him in the eyes. Zach says, going to my first ever MLB playoff game in my Let's life go. with my family on Wednesday. Let's go, Let's Zach. Go. Excited for that. Very excited. Good and y'all performing out there. Yeah, you guys are awesome. You shouldn't have to be paying for tickets. <laughs> right? Yeah, right. on, yeah, we'll, we'll have to. We'll, when will Arizona we'll our teams learn? Your guys. When will Arizona teams learn that yeah. they need to embrace Jimmy Eat World? <laughs> we should all embrace Jimmy Eat World. Are you kidding me? Uh, let's take a look real fast at the bracket uh, because I know that uh, the playoffs are starting to look interesting, and I know there's going to start to be some questions. D backs Rangers inevitable uh, World Series matchup. Correct. I see. Only two teams to be two. That's so the far. that's the only rational answer when you look at this postseason. Graphic. I will say the 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 Twins and Astros being one and one seems like such a joke. It seems like the Astros are going to win the next two. Um, I the Twins don't really got it like that. I don't think. And this then, this Phillies Braves series is very be interesting fun. because I feel like it's going to go five. That that game today felt like the series literally turned. Yeah. In the course of a game. Now yeah. I, I might be, that might be super overreactionary, but in watching that game, it, like, and that's almost what it felt like at one point in this game too, right? Like it felt like when, yeah. when, when Zach Gallon was pulled, well, not even when Zach Gallon like was pulled. They were clinging on for dear life. It did. And even prior to that, right? That yeah. huge strikeout that yes. Zach Gallon had of Freddie Freeman, uh, that, that absolutely felt like, you know, that was that moment where things could have gone the other way. And that strikeout in the fifth inning just, that yeah. like zapped no, the Dodgers, you know, hundred percent all, all of the momentum they had. It, it really did feel like they were hanging on for your life at a certain point, which maybe is not fair. Maybe that's just us revealing our trauma. But like, it did feel like like if they lose this lead, the game is over. There is not going to be no no back and forth. Yeah, like they need to they need to cling on for dear life. Um, and obviously they did, and so I, I'm happy about it. But it was certainly uh, there were scary hours there for a little bit. There were, they were, and instead. Now the Diamondbacks have a chance to clinch this series uh, here in Phoenix uh, on Wednesday, and, and they're going to do it at Chase Field, yeah. which currently looks like this, by the way, <laughs> if you haven't had a chance to see the thing we tweeted out. Uh, yeah, that's an interesting... That's an interesting, a few more people in there right now. But. Interesting, yeah, there's definitely more people in there by <laughs> now. Interesting seating arrangement. I have to wonder, I have to wonder... Uh, if those seats in the infield were sold at one point, now those people are sitting elsewhere. I can't help but wonder that. Yeah, there had to have been know. seats there, right? There had I, to have I been. I mean, I've seen... Uh, I don't know. I think maybe if the season was over, they would have eventually, you know, probably resodded the field and everything, so they might not have given a shit. But I feel like generally this is the protocol with, base, with baseball fields. You mean, re, like, resodded the field? You mean re-put down the turf? Like, yeah, the maybe yeah. if they had a season. Well, the turf is so weird. I don't know if any of you guys have seen it yeah, up you, close, but... It's like yeah, it's like in the dirt. Guess, it's yeah. so wild I don't how know I refer to it like river ass. No, it, but yeah, but it, it does need to be laid back down. Um, but per the D backs, game three at Chase Field officially sold out. Mm. Prior to that, that was prior to tonight's win. I which is a day I like I was sleeping. You could have gotten tickets for dummy cheap at one point, and now they are pr mm -hmm. pricey. Yeah. Uh um, not gonna be cheap now, for sure. But. Um but you can definitely find tickets out there for sure. You can. And you should be there for that. Yeah. Sell sellouts are such a lie because it's like, yeah, they're sellouts, but you can always still get tickets. Yeah. Especially when you got a friend. It's it's out. it's it's the age old discussion of tickets sold versus actually <laughs> people attending the events. I feel uh, like the number will be pretty similar. And we we, we know that. We've seen a couple of those instances, uh, as well as far as uh, you know, what uh, <laughs> what 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 some stadiums can look like, when, yeah. or even Chase Field. You know, when they say that there's thirteen thousand people there, and Dodger I have Stadium a hard time looking at times. Well, I'm saying those fans. Didn't Dodger Stadium time. was looking very. Uh, I mean, yeah, game one was yeah brutal, but there yeah. was even today I saw shots. There was a bunch of empty seats up in in the nosebleeds. Yeah. Um, well, uh, we do have uh, one of our favorite kings, uh, our young king, Alec Thomas, discussing. Uh, coming back home and playing games here at Chase Field in front of this crowd, the home crowd. Yeah, definitely leaving here with two wins is, you know, a good feeling. And, um, you know, going back home, um, you know, it's going to be awesome. So, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, d -backs fans show up and uh, show out. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be real cool. It's exciting, man. It's I everything. mean, I know that they've talked a lot about the atmosphere and wanting this atmosphere, and now it is time for the Diamondbacks fans to bring it. Elise said, hope the AC is working better at Chase uh, for that concert. Probably not. 
I'm going to guess not. It's uh, it's pretty hot. weather on Wednesday? Is it going to be a roof open kind of day? Oh, man. I don't know, but that would be a fairly... Wednesday, high of 94, low of 70. So that could be a roof day. It could be, for Very sure. Well be a roof day. Yeah. A roof open day, I mean. Yeah. Do you um, want... Someone asked us in the chat, would you prefer the roof open or closed on a day like this? Like, open for the vibes or closed for the noise? Open for the vibes. I think I agree. Open for the vibes. Chase Field with the roof open is a completely different stadium. Yeah. It's a completely different stadium. Yeah, I agree. There's, a, I mean, there is definitely a part of me that's like, you put the Dodgers in this tin can uh, uh, that is Chase Field, door or roof closed. You got just a whole stadium rocking. It could be a really weird experience for the Dodgers. Yeah. But yeah, um, especially because I feel like if you're a Dodgers player, you're used to strutting into Chase Field and it being a home game. Yeah. And all of a sudden you're going to walk in. It's going to be filled to the brim with D-backs fans. So I'm not <laughs> sure how uh, they would necessarily... Uh, respond to that but i think i side on the open roof <laughs> well and it's funny because um you know I, I don't i don't know like we know that dodgers fans travel well right but uh and i know that's still going to be a danger here in phoenix because it's not just dodgers fans traveling well there's a lot of dodgers fans that live here uh but uh it, it doesn't it, it really doesn't matter who you root for even if you're a member of tommy fam's family um <laughs> You still might not get a ticket, according to Tommy Pham. Here's what he had to say about the game being sold out uh, tomorrow. Oh, man, and I'm going to have to tell my nephew then that uh, tickets are sold out. He can't come. He's going to be upset. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Uncle. Uncle Tommy. Can I come Sorry. to the game? Nah. Yeah. Nah, sold out. Yeah. Uh, I love Tommy Pham. He's such a fascinating person. He really is. Um, he's, uh, he's an incredible person. Um, and honestly, um, a big contributor. I saw Tommy Pham tonight up on the top step. Uh, who was he? I, I think he was giving Jordan Lawler a hard time, like basically telling him not to fuck up while he was out there when he came in to pinch run. But I, I mean, we've heard a lot about Tommy Pham kind of given, uh, given the, his fellow players, uh, the business, if you will, we call it the business <laughs> around here. And, uh, I think that he has quickly become a guy that really does, help this team do one thing and that is like just kind of laugh and relax and yeah. they just you know they're they're they they've when they press we've seen how bad they can be but uh you yeah. know if they can stay chill if that you got a guy like that in the clubhouse super valuable especially a guy that's willing to tell his nephew no he can't come to the game yeah. his tickets are sold out because i think his humor is so unexpected too because he seems like such a stoic guy yeah so it keeps people like kind of i think locked in and then in moments where he needs the team needs to kind of loosen up he's out there trying to juke out bruce dar as he's as he's trying to run to first right like he's doing goofy shit yeah um and i love it like <laughs> per, it was a, per noted d box reporter michaela perkins longo's x-rays were negative yeah uh mm -hmm. after he got hit by a pitch and, and left the game um and in regards to that yeah. uh that's when he was swapped yeah. out I, although i don't i feel like I mean, I guess I'm wrong, but I mean, they they probably should have pinch run for him there regardless. It was like the bottom of the set or the top of the seventh, something like that. Mm -hmm. Top of the eighth, Evan Longoria. When you're up two runs, like I'd much rather have Waller on the base there anyways. So glad his x-rays are negative, but I'm probably, I think he probably would have come out of the game regardless. Well, we should have some more updates from Jesse Friedman here. We'll be joining us here shortly, but, you know, I know the Diamondbacks are going to act like they've been there tonight. I know they're going to you know, respectfully uh, celebrate maybe just a little tiny bit, but, you know, just kind of keep uh -uh. things focused. No celebrations. Right, because we've been here done. before. The job's not done. We're actually just, this is business as usual. We were talking about this. The we Diamond can Bags, celebrate. Yeah, you know, we can celebrate. They the can Bags, celebrate. Job's not done. Yeah, they, they're, this is just another day for them. But um, since we can celebrate, can we watch the Tory video again, Damon, real fast? Or? All right. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. 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 Listen, this is part of the journey. We're not there yet. Let's enjoy it. Let's embrace it. Let's fucking party. And the connected team is a fucking dangerous team. We are fucking dangerous. Let's fucking party. Oh, 
Let's fucking, fucking go. Dangerous. I can't get enough of that clip. Never. I'll I will never. watch it after every single win. We're fucking dangerous. Yeah. Tattooed across my neck. I'm going to watch it during uh, the off season. Sometimes I, I'm going to watch it just like That's when gonna I, be in my I wedding need to wake up. Yeah. I'm going to end it. I'm going to be like, I love you so much. And together we are fucking dangerous. Yeah, that's incredible. That's You'd probably love your new spouse almost as much as Tori Lavolo loves Mookie Betts. And I know that a lot of <laughs> you guys have seen that clip from before this series started uh, where Mookie Betts and Tori Lavolo had a very special tender moment that absolutely disgusted our producer, Damon. Yeah, I mean, I know everyone's like, oh, it's so fucking heartwarming. Look at this beautiful moment. And I've been saying it all year. What the hell is this chumminess with the Dodgers? He hates it. It's a joke. Let's put them in the dirt. I disagree in this situation. I think it, I mean, Mookie Betts hasn't done anything. He went 0 for 4 today. Like, I I think it was complete. Another four mind games? games, mind, mind games, game, 40, 40 chess, chess, mind games from he Tories was like, in his head? yeah, because he walked in there. They had a wholesome moment. He's like, he raised me. And so now every time he goes at the bat, he doesn't want it like, that. yeah, he doesn't want to do that. With a man who raised him. Pointed dad look. Tory, Tory stands up on, on the top step with just a little tear in his eye. Just don't disappoint me, boy. Don't disappoint me, my son. Oh man, that's a lot of pressure. That's a lot of pressure. Do I see in the the, the the results? I don't want. I don't want my. I don't want my father figure watching me do anything. Uh, that's that's too much. That's too much pressure. That's too much stress. But uh, I do say that, of course. Um, uh, we we know that there's one other guy that we were fucking just thrilled about his performance tonight, and that's Ryan Thompson. Uh, and we actually have a clip here uh, of Ryan Thompson uh, from the clubhouse. Oh, one second. I'll get it there. I'm not exactly. Uh, I think he's just talking about, um, you know, uh, being, you know, a, a critical part of this uh, of of this game. And and relievers don't usually have that big of a role. Yeah. I mean, for a guy like Ryan Thompson, it has to be such a crazy experience because like we were talking about earlier, this guy went from getting cut by an MLB team that was trying to win a World Series to all of a sudden. Being on being one. Being on a team is that is a actively run. trying to win a World Series. It's yeah. making a run. And so. It is, uh, it's got to be a pretty wild experience for a guy like that. Yeah, here's what Ryan had to say. You know, as a middle to late reliever, you don't really win the game, but you can lose the game. Uh, and so the goal there is to throw strikes uh, and execute the pitch. Um, you know, you kind of you kind of play the game of, look, I'm throwing a lot of strikes here. I need to make this hitter on, get, get this hitter on his heels. But at the same time, I'm not just giving him a cookie, you know. Um, like that game in Milwaukee when I had bases loaded, got to a 3-2 count after 0-2 and I had to throw him something to hit. Um, that's not a position you want to be in with the bases loaded in the game on the line. So um, with Wong right there, I'm just trying to get ahead and I'm trying to, to control the AB. I didn't hear guy. anything he said. I was lost in his eyes. I really was too. Beautiful you man. too? Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, but I mean, it's funny how you say that you're, as a, a middle relief pitcher, you can't really win a game, but you can certainly lose it. Yeah, um, and that's like yeah. that's such a tough spot. Like that's why really relievers is. are so, so special animals because like they are in such a. Uh, there's no winning as a reliever. It's, you a, either, th- it's you, a thankless job. It's, it it is a thankless like. job. It's yeah. like being a lineman. You yeah. either like if if people are talking about you, it's probably because you messed up. Right. Um. And like I think acknowledging that is a huge part of it. Um. I mean, like Enos in the chat, it's a, Thompson loves the mental game, and I think you kind of have to if you're going to be a, a really effective relief pitcher. Um. And it appeared. It appears, at least, that that's what Tita is. Known uh, again, known baseball GM Elise said there that where would the uh, where would we be without Ryan Thompson? Not in the playoffs, probably. Yeah, a hundred percent right. Yeah, Andrew Saul Frank too. He didn't have a great night tonight, but without Andrew Saul Frank, yeah. the Diamondbacks might not be in the playoffs. That's why as well. They're like they feel they're like step brothers. It feels like. I just associate them with each other. Yeah, because so Saul Frank messes they've, up. They've, ah, uh, his brother's there to get his, his back. His brother's there. He'll they'll clean up his mess. Um, but uh, of course, we know that the Diamondbacks, of course, <laughs> are uh, are 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 a goddamn wagon. They are so a get the wagon. get the official craft beer of a wagon, and that's uh, from our friends at Four Peaks. I keep uh, using that of- official term very loosely. It is the official craft beer. That is true of the so Arizona are Diamondbacks. The official uh, official beer of the wagon as well. But know. what did I what did I use it as? Is the official beer of the playoffs? Is that what I said this time? What did I say this time? What did I make the official beer of? Well, you said the official beer of the wagon. Yeah, which I guess they are. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't see where I messed up. No, you didn't. I okay. I messed up. Okay, I, that's yeah. what I thought. I no, thought so right. too. But uh, it's fine. 
It's fine. Um, we can make up over some beers. We have plenty. We have, we have plenty of time for you to get it right. Am I right? <laughs> yeah. No, we don't. Uh, but uh, make sure you, you get yourself back. a Four Peaks. Uh, no matter what your favorite Four Peaks is, there's a wide variety of Four Peaks to enjoy, in, including the Rattle on Red Ale for the Arizona Diamondbacks, the Joy Bus Wow Weed, of course, a great beer to drink after victory. Uh, we got Damon over there enjoying a Golden Lager, which is the official beer of baseball. Yeah, it's just the official baseball beer. So yeah. it doesn't matter so what good. beer you love. Okay. Well, so that good. see, so there's the problem. That was the there one you can't. I can't say the official, the official beer of baseball. baseball. Yeah. Major League Baseball would have no, not, not Major League Baseball. Baseball, just baseball. The just the concept of the Who sport of baseball. That? Nobody. Yeah. Golden Lager is the official beer of it. Yeah. No, you're right. Debate your pillow. Yeah. That's why he's the people's producer. Yeah, That's why right. he's no. the yeah. people's producer. Uh, also, it's Pumpkin great. Porter season, so make sure to check out Pumpkin Porter. Uh, back for a limited time on shelves and in draft lines throughout the valley. Visit fourpeaks.com slash locator to find all your favorite brewery tours and events. Stein Holding, Oktoberfest, and Haunted Brewery Tours are all right around the corner. Check out at Four Peaks Brew or at Four Peaks Pub to keep up with the latest at Arizona's hometown brewery. Must be 21 or uh, years or older to drink Four Peaks, and please drink responsibly. Uh, also... I did not hit my bet again on today's show, and I'm mm. once again you got, totally I, I okay mean, with I that. I think you just have to stop or maybe continue to uh, bet betting against on, Dodgers, on Dodgers pitchers. pitchers. Yeah, yeah, that's probably so you're betting on that's the probably the, that's the key. Backfired in the most egregious ways possible. And I'm okay with it. And games. I'm okay yeah, with it. I am more than yeah. okay with it. And I'm going to keep picking the Dodgers to win in the, pre- in the pregame. If you told me that me giving you $5 meant that the Diamondbacks were going to continue to win in the playoffs and all I had to do was continue to give well, you $5 before Flex every game. Flex was like, if this, if I have to pay all this money for y'all to win a World Series. It's fine. It's worth it. Worth every dime. <laughs> I'll pay for that ring every time. Worth every dime. So get down on the BetMGM app. You might actually win some money. And if you do, of course, uh, you can absolutely turn around and and. Bet that on the Diamondbacks to continue mm. on the World Series. This man has at least a half a dozen World Series yeah, bets on the D-backs. I, I'm about to play some more on the yeah. Diamondbacks to meet the Rangers. That's well, my World Series pick. That's point. right. And, of course, with the BetMGM app, you do get free bonus bets mm-hmm. uh, when you are a user. So, of course, if you are not a user yet, sign up today. Use our bonus code of PHNX. Uh, and if you do this, you'll get yourself some free bonus bets. All you have to do is download the Sportsbook app on iOS or Android or visit BetMGM.com and sign up using our promo code of PHNX. Then s- deposit at least $10 into your newly created account and place a wager in that amount of at least $10 or more at a standard odds price. Once you have placed a qualifying bet, you will receive $200 in bonus bets regardless of the outcome of your wager. Uh, Of course, you can sign up for the BetMGM Again, use our bonus code of PHNX and get that money. Place your first BetMGM Sportsbook wager through BetMGM Sportsbook mobile application of at least $10. You'll receive $200 instantly in additional winnings regardless of your wager's outcome. Check out the show notes for full details. And now listen to Shane talk about the disclaimer. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Colorado, D.C., Illinois, Indiana, Kansas, Louisiana, Maryland, Mississippi, New Jersey, Nevada, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, Wyoming. Call 877-8-HOPE-N-Y or text hope Y 467-369, New York. Call 1-800-327-5050, Massachusetts. 21 plus to wager. Please gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP, Arizona. 1-800-BETS-OFF, Iowa. 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help, Michigan. 1-800-981-0023, Puerto Rico, in partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. Visit betmgm.com for terms and conditions. U.S. promotional offers not available in D.C., New York, or Ontario. Ontario. All right. Well, we got some more super chats that I've completely neglected, so let's take a look at all of those. And Re- uh, Renee Enriquez says, D-backs brought their brooms with them for their fucking yoffs. Let's go. The fucking yoffs. Uh, Piece of Yoshi says, Costas was a boy when Dodgers left that L.A. as well. a factual statement, which is crazy. Yeah. That's so, and it also and he's adds a New up. York guy. He yeah. is. So it actually makes sense. It, it all does. does add up. It's all adding up a- now. Brooklyn Dodgers. <laughs> it's crazy. The fix is in. Uh, I know that one guy. Thank you for your super chat. Uh, you said local snake happy. No step on snakes uh, because we are wagon. Uh, we also have Mark Solera again at Disneyland says, okay, I might be overreacting, but who are we facing in the World Series? Like the he Rangers. said, it's the Rangers. It definitely feels like it's the Rangers. I said that out loud with the utmost confidence. Just like it was Not a fact even realizing it. And without even realizing it. And even I was put off by how much I believed in the moment that that statement was true. Um, and that the only reason why I doubt it is because I don't know if the Rangers are going to get there. But uh, Benjamin right. Hunley says when the D-backs were an easy matchup, they wanted to recede. When AZ wins, they want to examine the entire playoff format. Hmm. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. I just win games. Maybe. Uh, Mark Solera. Uh, you just gave us a super chat for hitting 700. Thank so, you guys. Thank it. all of you yeah. guys for being here. We can't thank you enough. 
All Tech ZZ, thank you so much. Said just like Tim uh, Capello in Lost Boys. Oh shit, I still believe. Use that track as the unofficial hype song. Wish I could be an AZ for Game Three. We wish you could be here too. Uh, again, make sure you guys do not miss out uh, unless you're part of Tommy Fam's family, and then you're just go, you're on your own. <laughs> uh, Ryuji Sakamoto said, if and when we make it back to the World Series, uh, they should bring back the purple for good luck. I have no arguments with that. My you're only argument would be. If you get into the World Series, you don't can't change, just be, you can't don't be changing change stuff anything. all the time. Yeah. I think purple first home playoff game, if they wore the the purple jerseys, the pinstripes, that would be electric. There's zero chance they'd lose. Uh, we also have to keep these mustaches because, once again, True. Diamondbacks are undefeated, undefeated. Uh, with the playoff stashes. AZ Sports Girl with the absolutely gorgeous uh, avatar says, mm. Damon should be so proud of when I laughed like a psycho when James Altman kept striking <laughs> out. He also was <laughs> laughing like a psycho. That's, exactly, that's the laugh. That's the laugh. That's the laugh. Uh, it was a lot. Uh, and uh, I uh, blatantly asked Nine says, Bob Costas is so sad calling this series Heart to the Snakes. And, yes, uh, Bob Costas. You know, again, he's it's, just dreaming of his of his days as a boy. That's right. For Jackie Robinson, that's and the Brooklyn right. Dodgers. But speaking of days as a boy, we are joined by our favorite Wonder Boy. It's the one and only <laughs> Jesse Friedman, who knew that intro was coming like that. It's my vice mayor, your Thunderstick, Jesse. How are the vibes in Los Angeles? Well, first of all, I'm not at all happy with that introduction. I, I think I want I think I want to be brought off the show and then brought back. You want to do it over again? Uh, all right. Something. Our very respected reporter and journalist, Jesse Friedman, is yeah, here. Yeah, Jesse. Grown-ass man, there we Jesse. Grown-ass man, Jesse, is here. Uh, Jesse, what a win tonight. I mean, we were talking about, obviously, game one was exciting. And the offense, everything, you, you're, 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 you're planning the parade route already. But there's something uniquely important about being able to win a close game like this against the Dodgers team that at times it felt like momentum and the crowd and everything was really like on their side and things were building up to like, uh, you know, a, a potential, you know, kind of Dodger comeback. I think Mookie Betts and Freddie Freeman are one for 15 in the series, if I'm not mistaken. I feel like that, I mean, wow. that's kind of where, that's kind of where things yeah. start for the Diamondbacks yeah. in this series, right? I mean, uh, Corbin Carroll, after, you know, uh, hitting the home run and, and singling in, in the first game of the series, he was on base four times today. At this point, it kind of feels like the, uh, the Dodgers just want no part of Corbin Carroll. They're going to, they're going to force, you know, other Diamondbacks hitters to beat them, which is a, an understandable approach, but I mean, at this point, Corbin Carroll has played four postseason games, and he's been on base 12 times. He's 12 averaging times. to be on base three times per game. I believe that ties a, a record uh, for a player, you know, number of times on base in, in a player's first four postseason games. I believe. I think I saw that from it Sarah Langs yeah. earlier. Yeah, it was um, a, it's it's Texas Rangers player from, from this postseason, actually. Huh. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think that's right. So... Yeah, just just unbelievable what Corbin has done and what the you know other guys at the top of the Diamondbacks lineup have done, right? Cattell Marte continues to contribute, right? Tommy Pham uh, continues to to contribute. Obviously had a really really big day uh, yesterday, even though or uh, a couple of days ago, even though today wasn't necessarily that game for him. Uh, just I mean up and down the the Diamondbacks lineup, you know, uh, top five or six guys, Lourdes Gurriel. Came through with a, a couple really big hits in this game. You know, an RBI single in, in that first inning, tacking on one additional run. He also got a really important insurance run later in the game with that solo home run at a time when when really no Diamondbacks hitter was was doing much offensively. Uh, so yeah, I mean, this Diamondbacks offense is just all of a sudden showed up. Uh, it's just, I mean, the postseason started, and all of a sudden they went from being an offense that had scored three runs in their last four games of the season. And when it's mattered, right, the only games that, that, that really matter at the end of the day, now that they're in the playoffs, that's when the Diamondbacks have, have come in and, and really played their, their best brand of baseball on all fronts, right? Uh, Zach Gallen was, was excellent today. Uh, I know we'll, we'll probably get into the, the decision to remove him from the game a little bit later. That was, that was certainly controversial. But when he was in the game, he was very good. And the Diamondbacks bullpen, you know, just continues to be uh, an asset for this team. Things were... A little shaky for for Andrew Saul Frank there in that sixth inning, but seven, eight, nine. Uh, those three guys, Ryan Thompson, Kevin Ginkle, and Paul Seawall, they faced the minimum, you know, to to get the the Diamondbacks this win when it was all said and done. And so, really, just all facets of the game. The Diamondbacks are clicking on all cylinders, uh, you know, right when it matters most, and you know, at Dodger Stadium of all places, 
it's it's been un, you know incredible to see. I think the thing that impresses us the most, Jesse, and I'm sure you would probably agree, is the fact that they're getting this 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 performance. They're getting this you know the offensive output from so many different sources. Mm -hmm. And I mean, as as good as Corbin Carroll has been consistently, and, and as much as he's kind of been kind of a catalyst to get the offense going early, it also feels like right now, you know, you, you never know who you're going to have step up, but it always feels like somebody is going to. Tonight it was Lourdes. We know in the Brewer series in one game it was Christian Walker. In game one, uh, you know, Tommy Pham had the big night of going four for five. It just feels like uh, the, the Diamondbacks don't need to rely as much on two main, you know, actors, two main main stars the way that the Dodgers do uh, in, in order for them to have success from, from their offense. I mean, the Dodgers have a really well-rounded lineup too, right? I mean, like yeah. Jason Hayward had a, had a really good year, even though he's more of a platoon guy for them, right? Max Muncy had another really good year. J.D. Martinez had, had an OPS of, of almost 900 in the regular season for the Dodgers. So, I mean, the Dodgers, the Dodgers lineup has more depth, frankly, than the Diamondbacks does, but in the regular season, right? Uh, now that we're in the playoffs, that just hasn't been the case. The Diamondbacks have gotten contributions you know, uh, up up and down through through the lineup, it, as you said, it seems like pretty much everyone in this batting order has, has had their moment. And, you know, the D-backs, even though base running hasn't necessarily been the asset for them that we might have suspected it would be, it was a really key moment in this game in the first inning when Tommy Pham took second base. It was pretty much mm -hmm. uncontested. Yep. Uh, if that didn't happen, then, you know, Gabby Moreno's RBI ground out suddenly becomes an inning-ending double play. Not only do they not score that run, but they wouldn't have been able to score a run when Lourdes Gurriel hit an RBI single, you know, the very next hitter. So, you know, theoretically, Tommy Pham taking second base in, in that situation, that, that added two runs to the Diamondbacks Ooh. total in that inning. They won this game by, of course, two runs. That was a really, really big moment in this game. It really is the little things. It is. It is. Like yeah. the managerial moves. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. I mean, a different thing, whether it's the... I mean, obviously at the time, controversial decision to take out uh, Zach Gallon, um, but it ultimately ended up working. I was what did did Tori say anything about the decision to ultimately pull Zach, or, or just kind of what were your thoughts on that whole happening? Yeah, uh, he was he was asked about it, of course, as you'd expect. Yeah. Uh, the Diamondbacks won this game, and you know that that decision didn't necessarily loom as large as it looked like it might have. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is, this is a different Tory Lovello than what we've seen in the past, right? This is a very different Tory Lovello than we've seen in the past. He's significant. He's been significantly more aggressive in the postseason uh, than he was in the regular season. And what he said after the game is, and he said this before, I've, I've had no reason, you know, not to trust Andrew Saul Frank, that he is going to come in and execute in these moments. Uh, and it wasn't the prettiest outing for Andrew Saul Frank, <laughs> frankly. Uh, when it when it was all said and done, uh, you know, it was a it was a walk. And then uh, he also gave up uh, an infield single, which scored a run. Uh, I I thought, you know, that I thought the decision in the moment didn't make a lot of sense to me personally. Uh, Zach Gallen was only at 84 pitches. The two mm -hmm. hits he'd given up in the inning. It wasn't like they were screaming line drives. They were both pretty softly hit first and second one out. Uh, and you also had to know that, you know, if you bring in a lefty, the Dodgers aren't going to just stand idle and and keep Jason Hayward and you know all of their lefties yeah. in the game. They're going to go to their bench and they're going to pinch hit, which they did. So yeah. uh, from that standpoint, I I honestly did not understand the move uh, in the moment. or understood, but didn't necessarily agree with the move, at least for me personally in right. the moment. Um, but what Tori also said after the game, and and I did suspect this as well. Part of the calculus there is to force the Dodgers to go to their bench and replace all of those lefties mm. with righties. Yeah. We all know the Diamondbacks back into the bullpen, right? Ryan Thompson, Kevin Ginkle, Paul Seawald, these are all right-handed pitchers. And so that was part of the calculus for the, for the D-backs doing that. Force the Dodgers to make those moves, bring in Chris Taylor, bring in Kike Hernandez. Yeah. It's going to set things up more easily for those back-end relievers. And and sure enough, that part of things worked to perfection. It was it was really clean in the seventh, eighth, and ninth innings uh, for for those for those D backs back end guys. So you do think that was like because I, I kind of was saying earlier that I don't know that how if they thought that far in advance, but you do think it was like an explicit part of of pulling Gallon was to get them to 
go to like weaker, go to their bench. weaker, weaker members of their bench. Hundred, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Tori said that uh, in okay. in the post game interview. He was specifically asked about that, and I suspected that as well. Um, but at the same at the same time, yeah, I mean it it, it worked <laughs> out right at this. But at the same time, in within that inning, you were putting Andrew Saul Frank in a really difficult spot yeah. because even though you were going to have you know advantages in in the later parts of the game. In that moment, Andrew Saul Frank was not pitching pitching with advantages, right? He was facing right-handed hitters, at least the first couple guys that that came in. So, uh, yeah, a gutsy move for Tori Lovello, a very gutsy move for Tori Lovello. It didn't look great uh, after the first couple hitters, but, you know, Ryan Thompson came in, and, and well, Saul Frank got a, a key second out of the inning on a strikeout. Ryan Thompson came in and got the last out, and then it was lights out, you know, from, from that point forward. Well, uh, we know that Zach Gallen should be happy, but apparently he isn't, Jesse, because according to the <laughs> post-game uh, interview he gave, uh, the job is not done. Let's get a glimpse of what Zach Gallen had to say about uh, not really being happy about this win and not being happy until they finish uh, the story. Job's not finished, really. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, I think quote Kobe was talking about is like, you know, what's there to be happy about, really? Um, I think it's it's a good spot for us to be in um playing with a little confidence um you know come in it's i don't think it's any secret that we've come in here and struggled um so i think it was good for us just mentally ourselves just to come in here and set the tone um you know, have a little faith in ourselves and then you know hopefully go home and finish the job is quoting kobe in la after you beat a los angeles team absolute <laughs> bars that's it's savage that's for. <laughs> but it's also true it's true like, right? job's not done there's nothing to be happy about yeah uh, I mean, and if you're Zach, we got if you're Zach, it's also like I didn't pitch that well. Nothing to be happy about. Jagertha's here, Jesse. Jagertha from Algeria. It's six thirty a.m. Algeria. Six thirty in the morning. Found out the D-backs won. Yes, Jagertha, our she, favorite Algerian. Yeah, she kicks off her day with a uh, <laughs> cup of PHNX D-backs podcast. Oh, yeah. Let's go and a D-backs <laughs> win. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I imagine that as much as this team does want to get excited, there is still a feeling that this still is the Dodgers. Yeah, there is nothing to be excited about yet until they win three games in this yeah. series. And because, uh, well, the one thing about going up 2 0 is that it allows you to blow a two nothing lead. Um, and so you certainly can't have that happen. Yeah, that's true. So you got to stay locked in. Yeah. I mean, the, there's no, there's no question that the Dodgers are very capable of coming into Arizona and winning two games and forcing a game five. Right. Yeah, I yeah. mean, the, the Dodgers Absolutely. winning two consecutive games at chase field, is not at all a foreign concept. The Dodgers have absolutely had the Diamondbacks number, not only in this ballpark, but also to a similar extent at Chase Field over the past few years. So, yeah, I, I kind of got that sense talking with, with just about everyone. It's almost hard to get, like, the, the meaty, you know, quote that you want from, yeah. from these Diamondbacks players. They're not, they're not ready to come out and mm. say, you know, yeah, we're dangerous. You like, you better yeah. look out. Like, yeah, yeah, we're feeling really confident. We're... You know, they, they're basically just saying, you know, we felt confident coming into the postseason. And, yeah, we feel really good about the way that we've played so far. Obviously, the Diamondbacks are one of two undefeated postseason teams in baseball right now. It's just them and the Texas Rangers. So, of course, they feel good about where they are at this point. But, yeah, I mean, they, they know from years of experience that the Dodgers are, you know, it's not a team that you, you, you don't take for granted uh, you know what, what's in front of the Diamondbacks in this situation. There's still there's still a lot more uh, a lot more work to be done for them. The and two you, hottest teams in the postseason are two teams that limped into the postseason. That yeah, barely made it. That's true. And you got yeah. Tommy out here uh, disappointing his family members by telling them <laughs> he can't get them tickets to the game. <laughs> that all right? Well, I thought Jesse. Uh, you know, I, I, I thought you had more on that. Like Tommy, <laughs> Tommy disappointing his family members is obviously a big, uh, big thing we're interested here. But uh, game three sold do you, out. Do you want? Do you want me to comment on Tommy? I was, fans? I was, ho on uh, I was just, I was just. Could, I thought you said. Did you send that clip in? Because I thought you had more from Tommy in regards to disappointing. Uh, what was it? His nephew. <laughs> his nephew. Yes. Yes, he did. This. I. I thought you were teeing up the clip. That's no, sort of, no, no. Maybe we played. I, maybe I. Oh, played you played it, it already. You yeah, played yeah, it already. Played it. Okay. I was like back in Arizona. <laughs> I was like, wait, why? Why are we not playing the video right now? Um, <laughs> yes, uh, yes, you've already seen it. Uh, yeah, a few people were asking around. You know, what's it gonna? What's it gonna be like going back home and, and playing postseason baseball at Chase Field? 
uh, someone I think mentioned that it that it was sold out, and yeah, that was Tommy Pham's instant reaction. I have a feeling that being one of the players, he might maybe have he an could end. swing something. He might uh, he might have the <laughs> an ability to uh, to sneak his nephew in if he wants to. But uh, yeah, that was that was a funny moment after the game for sure. All right, Jesse. Well, we need you back here in Arizona so that you can cover uh, them here. I, you know, and hopefully you, not have to fly back to LA. Yeah, we don't, we won't, we don't want you going anywhere, but maybe to Atlanta or Philadelphia. That's only that's where we want you going next. But do you have a preference, like city wise? Yeah. Ooh. Which one would you rather um, have to go to? Before? Yeah. Well, yes, like a good yes, one. I have. My my dad is from Philadelphia, so I have had I have okay. had the good cheese steaks, and I have spent a decent amount of time in Philly, and it is one of my favorite cities to visit. So I've never been to Atlanta, so that always is like kind of interesting, I guess. Uh, but Philadelphia is, in my opinion, I'm picking between the two. Philadelphia is where I want to go. Is the your yeah, there it Jesse is. Wants, <laughs> Jesse wants the wants Phillies. The Phillies. <laughs> I'll clip it. I don't know if the Diamondbacks want the Phillies, but I guess I want the Phillies for my own purposes. So do with that, that, do with that what you will. That's good. All right, buddy. Well, we'll see you back here uh, tomorrow, hopefully. Hopefully. We'll, Hopefully, we'll, we'll fingers see. crossed. We'll Drink see. lots of water. I know you have not been drinking enough water. Don't fucking lie to me. I know you haven't. So uh, go hydrate yourself. Make sure you get some sleep. All right, sounds good. See you guys. All right, later, pal. <laughs> He's not getting any sleep. That's why he answered me like that. Did you hear that? That <laughs> yeah, level sure. of disappointment what in his voice. What yeah, say, Dad? Whatever, whatever, sleep. Dad. Oh man. But anyway, we thank you guys again for being here in the PHNX Sports YouTube channel. Of course, make sure to get yourself that wagon shirt. It is the only get it get it Got quickly. It. Get it, wear it, it if you have it, wear it to the stadium. Shirt it's the unofficial of the Major baseball playoffs. Of, yes. See that's that true. that you can really invoke when you say the unofficial, uh-huh. then you can start invoking the most official shit. But like ah. you could say it's the unofficial a beer of the president of the United States. And it's like, well, it's, a f- I didn't say it was official. So the thing that I don't get Derek about this is Sean is so reckless, but, he is. but for some reason, this is but where then, he draws. The this I'm, an is where he absolutely, I'm an ad man at heart. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. You, you know, I you love the me- recklessness. Of I know. Just so you, can't mess with, you can't mess with no. the money. No, you can't. I'm, 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 I'm fighting wars for Matt. Well, and I don't want, like, I don't want to deter people from getting a diehard membership either, because that's the most important thing here is to get a diehard membership. Well, the shirt right? is can be the official shirt of diehards. It can be the official yeah. shirt of being a diehard. Yeah. Yes. And we can, can be, declare that. We can declare whatever the fuck we want. Yeah. Let's be honest. But <laughs> make sure to get yourself a diehard membership. You get that shirt for free. Of course, you'll get all sorts of other wonderful benefits. Uh, you'll get yourself uh, access to all of our content. You'll get access to our members only discord lounge but you'll get a free piece of merchandise from phnxlocker.com including that shirt and 20 percent off all future purchases so make sure to join us for or to go become part of the family get yourself discounts with our partners get yourself exclusive invites to events uh, exclusive discounts on merchandise and so much more so uh become part of our phnx family today uh and i'm gonna get all mushy now because we are before no 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 what go ahead oh i was just gonna say do you think there's a situation in which they have to pitch Clayton? Like, if you're the Los Angeles Dodgers, Lance Lynn goes terribly, and it's game three, do or die. Do they pitch Clayton Kershaw? Do you even care anymore? I, do you I, even care? I, I mean, I want them to. I don't I don't think. Do, do you think he cares, Damon? Yeah, I think he cares. You think he cares? It won't be till next year that he starts. <laughs> I'm going to be Mr. here. Right. I'm going to be here Wednesday. Yeah, this is what I was alluding to. Uh, we are losing a member of our PHNX family. Uh, and not losing him. He's not dying. Uh, he's not going elsewhere. <laughs> he's on to bigger and better things. Well, yeah, he's, dead, he's fucking dead to us. That's for sure. But uh, <laughs> this this show would not be nearly as electric without Mr. Electric, Sean DePaz. And when I say that, I say I've had uh, the absolute pleasure of working with you now for a number of months on doing the show. And before that, like we've been working here, but it's been an absolute joy working with you. You keep me young. You've made this exciting. I've only gotten you in trouble once. you That's it. Just one time, <laughs> but it's fine. We have the fact that you, you know, we wouldn't fucking be a wagon without you. We wouldn't be in the fucking yoffs without you. Uh, and I mean, it's been an absolute pleasure uh, to do this show with you. Uh, we will miss you. And I know you're going to come back for the parade. <laughs> yes. I know you're going to come back. Uh, we're going to get you to jump on and do shows with us. I'm not going to let you get away without doing that. But... <laughs> 
of course. Uh, he was dead to toe tree at like say 3 p.m. <laughs> dead? Just dead? Uh, well, after after they finished their ASU yeah, show. Yeah, no, I get it. He made him. Yeah, he made you do the show, and then he's dead yeah, to you. Well, no, I'm dead. you're you're not dead to me, but uh, we will miss you a lot, and we appreciate all of the energy. This place will be dimmer without Sean DePaz, <laughs> uh, and I'm not going to know nearly as many cool fucking songs or <laughs> phrases ski-y. or ski. I'll try to keep doing that, but we'll see what happens. But uh, in the meantime. <laughs> We, uh, we thank you, uh, and of course, uh, we'll keep you updated. Make sure to follow him on Twitter uh, at Sean underscore deposit. Keep up with all of the incredible things that he's going to have in his career and in Sean, his life. Sean is the backbone of what we do here, and <laughs> it's, it. no, it's going to be... He's, 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 I'm dead serious. Yeah, like he's, he's, he doesn't want us to do this, but like I fucking call this guy the MVP of PHNX for a reason. It's the, true. This and, guy and, is here producing first thing in the morning and then staying here literally all fucking day until 10, 11 o'clock at night to do this show with my dumb ass. <laughs> and it's been an absolute pleasure. And he's never faltered on how much work he's put in here. Graphics, producing, doing all the shows, all the shows, betting, ASU. It doesn't matter. We can call on this guy to fucking host uh, the, the Mercury podcast tomorrow. And he would do an podcast. incredible job at it. So. Dude, I, I know my way around a birdie. A shuttlecock, <laughs> excuse me. I know my way around a shuttlecock. Whatever, yeah. whatever Sean does, yeah. he's going to get fucking kill it. Wherever very I yeah, very absolutely. much appreciate you. Uh, to address the people in the chat, no, I am not going to launch BFLO. It's he's not, not happening. Yeah. But I do think y'all he are he to, he pitched I am it. staying in the All City family. I can tell you that. Yeah. Um. So you will see very soon, hopefully in the next week or two, exactly what I'm up to. Um, but it's just a little too early to officially announce it. Um, and tuned. also I got my shirt at the team store because I've seen a few people asking. So it's fucking incredible. But thank you again, man. I appreciate, I appreciate everything. You. Uh appreciate you guys being here tonight. Of course, we thank all 700 of you that came by for this post game show. <laughs> to see me what off. A, what what no a way to send reason. this guy off. Appreciate Just it. Just for me. Again, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at cap underscore caveman with a K. Sean is at Sean underscore deposit. Jesse is at Jesse and Friedman. Uh the people's producer, Damon, is at Damon Dog. That's with a D-A-W-G. We will always be Damon's dogs. <laughs> No, what, no matter where we're located at uh, but of course our show is at phnx underscore dbacks and all roads do lead to at phnx underscore sports on twitter instagram and facebook well he's taking the electricity <laughs> with him so i for his last show i'm gonna let sean close us out uh, and I'm going to do my best to reserve the power around the here because we just don't have as left. much electricity with him oh, without man. him we don't have the electricity folks oh man i don't even know but I, I mean, I huh, wasn't prepared for this. I guess I'll say speech, speech, speech. Baseball is fun, but it's so much more fun when you are in the mother fucking yard. Yeah! <laughs> We're all silly like the mayor.